Pinnacle TV, your source for video collaboration news. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya. Joining me here today, we have Mr. Dan Tunnell, he's the CTO of Pinnacle, as well as Mr. Alfredo Ramirez, he's the co-founder and CEO of Biopta. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us here on Pinnacle TV. And Dan, let's go ahead and start with you, if you can give us a brief introduction of Pinnacle. I'm Dan Tunnell, I'm Chief Technology Officer at Pinnacle. Our, our focus in life is to deliver excellence in, customer, in the customer experience for our customers in the visual communication and collaboration space. We're a premier managed service provider with presence around the globe. We have four VNOX in, uh, across the world to service our international customers, and we're very much focused on helping our customers deliver a managed video program for their end users with the right level of usage and adoption that return the right results for the business. And Mr. Alfredo? Bob, uh, we deliver uh, to our customers uh, the capabilities to monitor and optimize uh, video and collaboration uh, experiences. And so we are used by many of the largest uh, global brands uh, on the planet. Uh, we have uh, well over 125 very large uh, customer or enterprise of us customers. Uh, and uh, across many verticals from financial services, high tech, uh, healthcare, and uh, government, and, and many others. Uh, and uh, we've been growing at a rapid rate, uh, nearly uh, 2x uh, per year over the last uh, four years. What trends are you seeing as, as a leader in the visual collaboration network video conferencing space? Yes, regarding trends, we're definitely starting to see that uh, video collaboration starting to go mainstream as more and more employees and, and businesses are, are using it. Uh, in large part, uh, it's video technologies today are, are better, uh, offer better and richer collaboration experiences. Uh, we're also seeing that uh, video call minutes is increasing at a much faster rate than just adoption of what you see in the public internet. Uh, and uh, we see that uh, based on our own customer base as we, and, and, and from newer customers as we uh, onboard them. We're also seeing that more and more employees are adopting private virtual meeting rooms uh, as, you know, the, the, uh, you know, with audio conferencing that was uh, deployed back in, you know, 20 something years ago. And, uh, we're also uh, observing that uh, employees within uh, enterprise environments are also have more options for leveraging video collaboration across uh, you know, their virtual teams or engaging with customers. And so they can communicate uh, via software clients like ourselves here today from a PC, laptop, touch, uh, or tablet, to a smartphone, to web browsers that support WebRTC, to hardware endpoints, you know, for group meeting rooms, uh, uh, setups, to uh, your personal desktop uh, environment. And then finally, we also uh, see that uh, businesses are not just investing in one video collaboration technology. Uh, they're, they're, you, you have your traditional players like Cisco and Microsoft and Polycom, but uh, many uh, of these enterprises are, uh, there are specific departments or business functions are also adopting other collaboration technologies that better meet their workflow needs. Uh, so it, it could expand beyond just the traditional players to newer players, cloud service providers to some of the newer enterprise messaging uh, apps that have adopted video or that have included video in their technology stack. Right. And so I think this creates an environment that's ideal in this partnership between Viopta and, and Pinnica uh, because it's not a, a very simple environment that the support maintain and manage. Uh, that, that definitely makes sense. Uh, Dan, are you seeing similar trends with your customer base? Uh, absolutely, very similar. I think, I think one of the biggest trends is that visual communications has made its way onto the C-level agenda, and, and lines of business are challenging the IT organization to deliver a more comprehensive visual communication strategy and, and execution against that program. People are looking at resolving the video conferencing challenges they have within their four walls, but then now they're starting to think, what's next? You know, how do I introduce that into my customers, into my partners, into my supply chain? Um, so we're definitely hearing from our customers 
certainly on the IP side, there's a tremendous amount of pressure from the C-level suite to deliver the right program. Uh, and, and they're looking for partners like, like Pinnacle and Biopta to help them along that journey. Uh, we're certainly seeing that from a trend perspective, you know, customers are at different parts of that journey, um, and some are at step two of 10, and some are at more progressive in terms of further along that journey. Um, and they're really trying to figure out how do I deliver a comprehensive solution to my user community uh, where the user requirements continue to change, right? We, we've all come from the boardroom environment. It's moving out into huddle rooms. It's moving down into the desktop. Um, and there's lots of technologies. As Alfredo mentioned, I think things are becoming much more complicated in the customer estates as opposed to, hey, there's one technology, we just need to figure that out. There's more and more technology options. We have the big players, we have the next generation players, and the IT organization is, is generally struggling with, how do I manage this? How do I build a program? Where do I get these resources? Because I'm typically just using some existing skills I have, and I need to be able to augment. I think the last, the last one I would, I would comment on from a trend perspective, um, video conferencing has traditionally been in its own little silo from uh, how you consume it, how you procure it, how you, uh, how you bill for it, and how it's supported within the organization. And if you asked, um, if you asked the customer who supports, you asked three or four customers who supports video, we hear things like the networking folks, the data folks, the, I, the telecoms folks, facilities owns video. Um, and they're really starting to take this application and bring it in under the umbrella of the IT governance so it runs through the same best practice and methodologies and starting to leverage the tools like what Pinnica and Biopta bring to the table in terms of the analytics, the reporting, the alerting. How do we know how well things are performing? And that's, I think, where, where customers are really starting to look for help. Great point. Great points, uh, Dan, and, and you're really uh, talking to uh, a lot of the, the key pain points that I, I think you're, you're hearing from your clients and the necessary solutions that you bring to the table to solve them. Um, can you tell us how you're solving these, uh, these pain points? And I'll start with Dan. Sure. So, so I think the, the, if, if we talk about what's the one metric that the, the executive sponsor is looking to change, it's What's the utilization of my assets? We're making some investments, we built a business case, we rolled out this technology, and we're not seeing the return. And that utilization is 10, 15, 20%, and why isn't it 30, 40, 50, and why isn't this program growing? So we're certainly helping customers on that front in terms of our consulting practice, meeting with their end user community, talking about what would you like to see in the program? What are your challenges? Really representing the IT organization to understand what is it that the user community thinks of the existing program uh, and what are they looking for moving forward? And we often find a big gap between what the users think the service is delivering to them and uh, the folks that own the program, what, they're, what they think they're actually delivering. So there's usually a gap. So, so we perform a, a program assessment and we just help them understand uh, and share with them, here's the best practices. We've been helping a lot of customers over the last 18 years a lot of large multinational complex estates and we've been through a number of the same challenges so customers really start to appreciate and have in and start to gain some insight in terms of okay so we need to do this we need to you know add a, add a program manager we need some more usage and adoption programs absolutely technology is very important um, and technology is complex but it's much more than technology so we're helping our customers understand that there's a technology piece but there's people in process. Do people feel comfortable being on video, right? That's also a, a cultural challenge that we need to overcome. And what's the business process that we need to make sure that we integrate, that we can support things effectively? How do we integrate our operational workflows into tools like Biopta that allow us to see what's happening in real time? The alerts are being fed into our CRM application and somebody processes an alert at two in the morning when something goes bump in the night because we need to make sure we're delivering the right level of service. So we're really trying to help our customers with, with very limited resources be an extension of their team to drive their managed service, to drive and support their program and measure that success and deliver those results back to the business. Yeah, I really love that sort of white glove customer relationship approach um, that uh, you're, you're talking about, Dan. Uh, Alfredo, what are you seeing on your end? Yeah, regarding 
key pain points from our customers or for that matter partners that are you know, trying to leverage uh, tools to better serve their customers. Uh, we see the job of managing and supporting an environment that's growing much more quickly uh, like video collaboration is really hard at scale. And then you throw in different uh, video collaboration technologies that are being adopted within enterprise to meet this, uh, the different uh, business departments or functions needs uh, creates even more complexity as well. And so, uh, Bopta, really our, our goal is to make sure that we're making it simpler to you know, better manage and support those environments. Uh, some of the other uh, pain points that we've, uh, uh, our customers have told us about that we have already built or we be, will be building out to support is around how um, video collaboration uh, needs to, uh, to, or they're trying to get a, a, a better grasp of their investment, their costs uh, versus the utilization of those investments. So Dan touched on it earlier. And so you, you want to optimally utilize or maximize the utilization of the investment that you've made. So you have to have visibility on what's being used and what's not being used. And, and then also uh, leverage that information to either drive uh, greater uh, education, training within that uh, employee or knowledge worker uh, workforce, uh, or uh, improve the collaboration experience if it's an issue regarding quality and reliability or, uh, or other. And so uh, th those are typically uh, the, the major problems. Now, the leadership of these organizations and Dan was talking to that as well, is they're looking uh, to get fact-based uh, data or in order for their teams to make data-based decisions, not uh, decisions based on opinion, conjecture, or other. So how do your organizations address that need for tracking analytics that really help optimize the networks? Alfredo? So Vopta is all about big data. Our, our pro, we're a, a monitoring analytics uh, uh, solution, and we use uh, real-time and historical data streams in order to uh, provide the insights, in order to increase uh, the speed of troubleshooting or preventing issues within that total enterprise environment. We're also leveraging that same data set to provide insights to improve the speed and accuracy of capacity planning, budget planning, uh, the reporting that Dan talked about you know, for adoption, utilization, and much more that uh, their, their users or their planners and management need. And finally, um, with the same data set in this big data environment to support benchmarking ROI analysis as well. All excellent points. And Dan, from a Pinnacle point of view, can you tell us how you're addressing big data analytics? Some of the data that comes out of big data um, is information that will support the further investments in the program. So, you know, demonstrate to me uh, from a leadership perspective that we are driving the right utilization, that we have more people that are using this technology, that we are closing more business from a sales perspective because we're, we're leveraging video to meet face-to-face -face with our potential clients. Um, so, so that's very important from a business benefit perspective. Um, you know, Pinnacle recently announced our superstructure of things. And, you know, you can imagine over the years as a managed service provider, providing services to some very large brands, uh, both directly as well as through our large carrier uh, channel partner relationships. Um, you know, how do you connect all of these systems? Some of them are enterprise systems. Some of them are service provider. There's data that needs to be moved around across all of the element management systems. It's fairly complex. And over the years, we've built an information highway. We've branded it the superstructure of things. And it's about moving that data, processing that data, and taking the, the information and making decisions um, using some AI. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll stretch a little bit there. We're using some AI in terms of making some intelligent decisions and feeding that into workflow and leveraging our global VNOX. We have four distributed around the globe to make sure that, you know, 24-7 support for our customers, whether they're subscribing to our, our cloud uh, platform and offering or we're managing their on-prem solution. It's about how do we take that data? How do we integrate some of the tools that we've built, some of the tools that Alfredo has built, and, and taking the best of the best to be able to deliver that service to the end user. We often look at, and our analogy is sort of the above the line, below the line. All the stuff below the line, the end user 
doesn't really care about it, right? And, and it's very complex, and that's what they look for from you know folks like Pinnaca. Uh, the above the line is is the user and what they experience, and you know their experience is when I call in for support, I get access to the right support and expertise. I'm looking for reports and analytics, and I were able to take that and be able to share that with my leadership team or my stakeholders. Um, and the actual experience, me as a user, in terms of how do I get into these conferences? And then when I'm in these conferences, what's my experience in making sure that if there are issues that I, I'm able to get the right level of support? So it, it all, you know, it all comes. There's a lot of data that we need to take. We need to process it, uh, interpret it, and then uh, action against it. Absolutely, and there's certainly a lot of collaboration that's going on between your two companies, as you both have already alluded to. So, Dan, starting with you, can you tell us a little bit more about that partnership? So, first and foremost, it's a, it's a very strategic partnership for Pinnica. Um, it's global in nature in that we can sell service and support. Um, but more importantly, as we, as, we, as we look to evaluate products and, and next generation technologies that are available in the marketplace, it's about finding the right partner that has very similar business culture. We're, we're very similar in nature in that we want to listen to customers. We want to take that input, be flexible, be agile, be, um, be taking that information and feeding it, feeding it into feature and product enhancements. Um, so, so very strategic from our perspective, and we've done some really good things in some of our customers today, and we want to continue to do a lot more and add the technology. We have it inside of our global cloud architecture. We have it inside of some of our customers. And the, the key thing for us as part of the relationship is we need to make sure that we're adding additional value on top of, right? There's a, there's a core capability there. But how do we take those alerts and we built a service integration module where we take that and we feed those into our CRM. We feed them into operational workflow. So it becomes an integrated tool as part of an overall service delivery program for our customers. I will concur with everything Dan just said, <laughs> and I, I will just basically, uh, <laughs> I, will, I would say, look, our, our partnership uh, with uh, Pinnick is one of strength from a go-to-market standpoint and a solution uh, uh, delivery standpoint. Uh, we complement each other's solutions with a shared goal to better serve our customers and, uh, and, and to really to help uh, Pinnica uh, deliver on its mission to empower their customers' video collaboration cultures. For our viewers who may want to learn more, please go ahead and check out viopta.com and pinnica.com. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time today, and thank you, viewers, for tuning in to Pinnica TV.